This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 610, Analyzing Solutions to Quadratic Equations. We're going to start out this lesson with an activity. I want you first to graph each quadratic equation in the table found below and record the number of x-intercepts. The second thing I want you to do is solve each equation using the quadratic formula and record how many of the solutions are real. Describe any patterns you see in the table so far. And then step four, I want you to calculate the value of b squared minus 4ac for each question. And then I want you to make a conjecture about the relationship between the calculated value and the number of real solutions. So I'd like you to stop the video right now and do the activity as listed below. So some patterns that you may have seen when you worked through this is when you didn't have any x-intercepts, so we had zero x-intercepts, our value was negative. We had two x-intercepts when our value was positive. And I had only one x-intercept when my value for b squared minus 4ac was zero. This value of b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. We alluded to it before in one of your previous lessons. The discriminant can be used to determine what kind of solution your equation will have. Will you have complex solutions? Will you have real solutions? Will you have one solution, two solutions? How many solutions will you have? The discriminant can help you with that. So when we use the quadratic formula, we have this value underneath the radical, which is b squared minus 4ac. So what happens underneath this radical determines what, what's going to end up in my solution, what my solution is going to end up as. So let's take a look at what happens when I graph a quadratic that has a value under the radical that is positive. So that means our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So when that happens, I know that my parabola, and this is for values of a that are positive. If, if a was negative, we just know our parabola would be opening up in the, in the opposite direction, but our intercepts will still be the same. So now, if we look at this, I have this, this parabola is going through the x-axis two times, which means it has two solutions. And I know that if I have two solutions, they're going to be real solutions. When I look over here at this middle one, when my value for b squared minus 4ac is 0, then I would get the square root of 0, and I know that 0. So that means that I'm only going to have one real solution. So I know that my vertex, then, is going to be on my x-axis. Now, if b squared minus 4ac is negative, that means I'm going to get an imaginary number, which means I will have solutions, they just will not be real. That means they will not inter intersect the x-axis. So I know that I will have two non-real solutions. I want to look at something called the roots of equations. When you see the roots of an equation, you can also think of that as solutions to your equations, and it's also going to be called as called zeros of your function. All three of those will be interchanged. And we use a discriminant theorem to kind of organize the information that we found above in those three different scenarios with the graphs. So the first situation, suppose a, b, and c are real numbers with a not equal to zero. Then the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero has two real solutions if your discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. It has one real solution if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero and it has two complex conjugate solutions if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. In example one, we're going to look at three different quadratic equations, and we're, we're going to determine the nature of the roots of each of those equations. So in letter A, 6x squared plus 2x plus 5 is equal to zero, and if I evaluate my discriminant, I would find that b squared, so 2 squared minus 4 times 6, times 5 would give me a value of negative 16. So that means my discriminant is less than 0. So if I look in my discriminant theorem, if it's less than 0, then my, my roots are going to be complex conjugates. Let's look at b. Insert negative 12 for b, 9 for a, 
and 4 for c. So negative 12 squared minus 4 times 9 times 4 gives me a value of 0. So if my discriminant is 0 using my discriminant theorem, then I know that I have one real root. I also know that my graph, if I graph my parabola, it will go through the x-axis at its vertex. Now let's take a look at the last one. 3x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. So the discriminant in this case is going to be 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 2. That equals 25. So my value of 4d is 25. That means that I have a value greater than 0, so I know I'm going to have two real solutions. But I also even have a special case here where my discriminant is a perfect square. So that means if I'm going to take the square root of 25, I know that I'm going to get a rational number. So that means that not only do I have two real roots, but I also have two real roots that are rational. Let's look at an example now that would model a, a real world situation. So we have the equation h equals negative 0.4x squared plus 2x plus 2, and it models the path of a ball where x is the horizontal distance in feet that the ball has traveled, and h is the ball's height in feet above the ground. Use the discriminant theorem to determine whether the ball ever reaches a height of 4 feet. So we can go ahead and set our equation equal to 4. So 4 equals negative 0.4x squared plus 2x plus 2. Has real values of x, then the ball will reach 4 feet. So if I use the discriminant on that, that would be 2 squared minus 4 times negative 0.4 times negative 2, that would be 0.8. So 0.8 is greater than 0, so that means the discriminant is positive, so there are going to be two real solutions to this equation. So the ball will reach a height of 4 feet two times in this situation. This is the end of chapter 10, or chapter 6, lesson 610.